Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me on the comfy couch. There's no tea involved, no nothing. We're just talking as we normally do. Photo, video, and tech. Today is a tech day. I guess I would say this afternoon is a tech afternoon. Well, everyone knows that I've been doing a lot of testing on routers. I think I've tested about six or seven failover or load balancing routers that are in the affordable range. Not the high end stuff that majority of you can't afford nor want to spend money on, but affordable ones. And I was trying to figure out which ones would work the best for me and hopefully for you. Now, the question that I keep on getting over and over and over is which one uses the least amount of power? And I haven't talked about this in any videos as of yet, but what I did was I did a power test on each and every one of them with a kilowatt hour type of tester that over time figures out how much power is being used. And I've been doing this since the very beginning, but like I said, I haven't talked about it. And today that's what I want to do. Um, I'm going to go back and show you my readings, let's say, on each one of these routers and then put them maybe in a chart or something just to show you how much power each one uses under load, under no load, what is the maximum, what is the minimum. And we're going to take a look at today the router that I'm currently using, which is that PepLink. Now, if you haven't watched my last video, go check that out. Maybe somewhere right around here about that PepLink router. It is right now the best one that I have been able to find. Now I'm going to continue testing other ones, but as of right now, it is the best. And I've went through TP links, multiple, a UTT. I went through multiple trend nets, a whole bunch of different things. This one is a PepLink. Now there's other ones, like I said, I'm going to test, but until then, this is the one that we're calling the best. Now I'm going to show you what the findings are. I'm going to actually get up and go up to the router itself and show you what the kilowatt hours are and also what the draw is currently. We're going to take a look at that in just a second. But before I get any further into this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. They are free just for you being here. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you just want to say thank you, a lot of people have been asking me about this. Is there a way that we could contribute a dollar or two or whatever? Some people even said you should make a fund or something so that you can buy even more routers and test. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll do that sometime. But if you just want to say thank you, you can click this little thank you button down here or even better, become a member of the channel. That would be awesome. Awesome. Also, if you enjoy the content, even in the least, please throw it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you want more Starlink coverage, I have about 50 or 60 videos so far. I have a Starlink playlist. Go check that out at the end of this video. So let's go ahead and check out this PepLink router and see what kind of draw numbers there are. Maybe we'll do some calculations, all right? Let's go check it out. Hey guys, look at this. There's some of the gear. <laughs> well, the router's up here, so let's get up here. I need like a ladder to get up here. Anyways, this is the router setup right now. This is the PEP link. It is going at it. I actually have speed tests and a bunch of different things. I have videos going. And as you can see, the lights are just firing off like crazy there. I did that on purpose so that we get a good amount of load on this device. All right. So if we come up here, we can see, hopefully there's enough light. I'm going to get in kind of nice and tight here. Can we read that? It says 0 0.019 kilowatts. So that is on three hours and 20 minutes so far of usage. Now we can cycle through this a little bit and see what kind of information it gives us. Here we go. So the low, the lowest amount of wattage that is used is 2.3 watts. And if we move on to the next one, we can see the maximum or highest watts is 6.5 watts. So that's not too bad. That's still kind of high. I would like to see it a little bit lower than that, but let's do some math here. Let me find my phone. All right. So we'll take that 0 0.019 and multiply it by eight because they're giving us three hours worth of information so far or three and a half. Let's just call it three. Three times eight is 24. So that comes to 0 0.152. 
Now we multiply that by a thousand, we end up with 152 watts in those three, three and a half hours. So 152 multiplied, that's per day, times 30, for example. You're looking at 4.5 kilowatts per month. That's how much this would use. So it's not a real big draw, but it's definitely not the lightest of all of the ones that I've seen. And what we're gonna do is we'll get into some other ones. I'll go on the computer and I'll show you all the other different routers so you can see the difference between this one and the other ones. I know there's definitely routers that use less power, but I think there's one that uses even more. But we'll see when we get back over to the computer. But for now, let's get back to the comfy couch. So guys, 150, let's call it. Even though it was like 3.2 hours, so it'll probably be more like 135, 140, 145, somewhere around there per day as far as the amount of watts that are being used from this device. The reason why this is important and the reason I get all of these questions is a lot of you guys are trying to run Starlink off either a solar type of panel where it's running on a battery. They're trying to figure out how many watts they're going to need for the entire setup, for the router, for the Starlink router, if they don't take that out of the mix completely, for the dish itself which has a modem in it. And it also, remember, it heats up according to temperature. So that dish itself uses anywhere from about 30 to 40 watts, but if it gets cold and it needs to melt ice, it will push the watts all the way up to 150 watts. And these are the kind of things that people need to take into account if they're trying to run this on solar, on a battery, or maybe they're RVing around or camping or whatever, mobile. So, and other people just want to make sure that they're using power wisely. Now costs are becoming just unbearable. We have fuel costs that are crazy, food costs that are nuts. And now we see electric costs are getting more and more expensive. So trying to find a router that actually does what we need it to do, but does it efficiently, I think is very important. Now, a few of you guys have said, you know, why don't you use like PF Sense or something like that and take an old machine, an old PC, and build it out into this type of an appliance? Well, there's multiple reasons. Number one, I'm trying to keep power usage down. And as soon as you use an actual proper PC, power usage is gonna be a hell of a lot more than an appliance, that's number one. Number two, I don't want the sound of fans running, right? So it needs to be fanless. That's number two. And number three, I want the footprint to remain small. I don't want an entire PC for just running as a router, okay? That's just a little bit much. So if I can find an appliance that is small, that still has a powerful enough CPU and that can run fanless and do the job, I might actually try building a PFSense type of setup. And I think it could be very powerful, especially for the amount of configuration that you can do with it. So that might be something that I do in the not so distant future if I can find one of these small PC appliance type of things that are low cost. Because once again, if you could just buy a PF Sense type of device that costs like 189 bucks on Amazon, well, why build your own? Okay, that's the way I look at it. So if we can do it on the cheap, and if you guys know of any really cheap, maybe old Dells or some type of small type of appliance, um, let me know. And maybe we'll pick one up and build it out and install the software and then show you guys how to do it. So before I end this video, I wanna jump over to the footage and do some narration over it that I captured of each one of the routers and how much power each one used from minimal to maximum. And then I'm gonna throw on a chart and I'll give you some commentary over it. So let's go over to the computer and check it out. So I can show you which one has the most amount of power draw and which one the least. Once again, this is very important to you guys according to what you've been saying. So the best right now, the one that has the absolute least draw, and that would be the UTT-ER850G. 
that uses anywhere from about 1.5 to 1.8 watts, somewhere right around there. The next one is the TP-Link ER605. Once again, very, very good when it comes to the amount of power being used. That goes from 1.2 watts up to 2.2 watts, and it holds steady right around 2 watts while it's running. The next one is the TrendNet 431BR. That runs from about 1.4 watts up to about two watts. The difference between this router and the TP-Link ER605 is nominal. You can go with either one of those two. They're gonna be equally as, let's say, cost efficient or energy efficient. Now, the best one still holds true as that UTT ER850G. Now the next one in the list is the TrendNet 829DRU. That runs anywhere from about 2.3 watts up to 6. 0.4 watts. Now you can see there's a big difference between these. As you're getting up in class, this is considered a corporate router or a more business class router. It's going to use a little bit more power because the processor in it is going to be stronger. It's going to be able to do a lot more processing, a lot more things going through it, let's say, and at a faster speed. Now the next one is the TP-Link ER7206. That runs anywhere from 4.5 watts up to 5 5.5 watts and in my personal opinion I just really didn't like this one too much and the reason being is it didn't really give a lot more for the buck let's say the value really wasn't there I would just go with the TP-Link ER605 if you wanted to use a TP-Link unit period that's my personal opinion you are getting a little bit more it is more of a business class router in that 7206 but your miles may vary. I thought that it wasn't fabulous for the amount of cost difference, as well as, as we can see here, in cost efficiency or energy efficiency. Now, the very last one is the one that we're running currently as of today, and that is the PepLink Balance 20. And that runs anywhere from 2.3 watts up to 6.5 watts. And we did a cost assessment on it, and it ran anywhere from about 140 to 100. 150 watts per day. So that's it guys, what do you think? All right, did you enjoy this? Did it give you information that you needed? If not, was it at least entertaining? <laughs> If you liked it, even in the least, please give it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Share it with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever, trying to grow this channel out. And as I said before, if you just want to say thank you, you can do so by clicking the thank you button or even better, becoming a member of the channel. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Love you all. Bye.